go. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. This is Denver Blockchain, and uh, I, I'm pretty excited to announce some interesting stuff that's going on with Denver Blockchain and larger is we have Cryptorado. Right? This is really the home base for a lot of things that are going on in Denver and the surrounding areas and anything blockchain or cryptocurrency related. This is really the, the home base. I'm pretty excited to announce we finally have a, a working events calendar so nobody's like, what's going on all the time? Yeah. So Cryptorado.org, um, you'll be able to go ahead and find whatever's going on like this event tonight and copy it to your calendar, do all this kind of stuff. And we're building it out right now. If you want to help with this, if you're here local, let me know because all this is under construction. Um, but with that, I want to pass it off to our esteemed guests and panelists here today. So I will pass it over to Duncan. You don't want to hear me? Or Deacon. Or Deacon. Deacon first, yes. <laughs> Deacon <laughs> first. Deacon, Duncan. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Get up with me. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Cool, so uh, thanks for coming out. This is awesome turnout, uh, even with the snow and everything. Um, so tonight we're gonna be talking about DAOs and like, what that means uh, or doesn't mean. Like, everyone has a little of that. Uh, I just heard this phrase, uh, post-traumatic DAO syndrome, right? So, um, like how, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what does it mean? How are we, how are we kind of like reigniting the idea uh, what tools we're using. Um, um, so for, for, for a quick shout out to uh, Orochi Dow, who's actually sponsoring this event, bought the pizza and beer and stuff. Um, they're actually a Dow. So they um, are a group of sponsors. Here's a list of all of them. And there's some members from the, the sponsor list actually in the crowd. So you can go talk to them and, um, and see what they're about. But a, a lot of cool guys, they all got together. Great teams, um, and decided to go around and sponsor local events and, and, and large events. So, um, yeah, so we're gonna have a, a couple quick talks. We'll have one with uh, James Duncan. Uh, he'll be talking kind of about the history of uh, collaboration inside the Ethereum community and uh, about DAOs, and then so. Why, uh, why we're all here, a lot of us are here tonight, was with the Meta Cartel kind of working session. So over the last two days, we've been, we've been just hashing out things and talking about what our next moves might be. And so Meta Cartel is also a DAO. And um, so we're gonna then go into a panel. Uh, we've got James Duncan, he's gonna be kind of, uh, he's from a bridge. And he'll be talking about legal and business side of things. Uh, James Young, also from a bridge is kind of going to be our tech representative. Um, uh, many years in tech uh, helped collaborate on the original Moloch contract, which is the contract that we use for a lot of these DAOs. Um, we've got Vin Gist from Odyssey, co-founder of Odyssey, and uh, kind of UX design kind of person, and um, Peter Pan, who's our uh, summoner. So you can kind of figure out what what, what that means, what is the summoner of a DAO. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and let uh, James get started. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Deacon and Dan, for putting this together so quickly. Um, really fun to kind of get the community together, and it's kind of a big piece of what I'm going to be talking about, too. Um, so I'm James, um, working with Abridged, also a big contributor to the Meta Cartel. Um, and I wanted to, one of the things that sort of we, we discussed in our meetings the, the past couple of days have been sort of how collaboration is formed in the Ethereum ecosystem. And um, collaboration on a human level, specifically, um, is, is kind of what I'm, I'm going to be pointing at. And so to begin, Ethereum was born. Right, born in 2015, um, and uh, it's in some ways um, an, an original DAO, in my, my opinion. And I, th I think Bitcoin preceded that, right? And so, so I think, to me, a DAO is sort of a, a mechanism that a bunch of people can come together and coordinate around and share resources and build towards some sort of common goal, ideal. Um, it, has, it has something that brings people together to collaborate and, and work 
right? Um, and that's definitely something that Ethereum has, has done a really good job at. Um, if you are familiar with the Ethereum ecosystem, it is the most robust developers uh, or development ecosystem and community um, out of all sort of blockchain projects available today. Um, and it still is the case despite the bear market, right? Um, in 2016, the biggest ICO, um, this is like pre, like ICOs were even a thing really. It was like, I guess there were a couple like token sales, but um, ICO market didn't hit until 2017. The DAO was the biggest first project within the Ethereum ecosystem and sort of um, drove serious collective mindshare. I wonder if there's any Slocket guys in the crowd tonight, because Slocket, I'm pretty sure is a Denver project, right? Um, or I know some of those guys are out here. Um, but they they were kind of one of the community organizers that made this DAO contract, um, raised $150 million, and quickly realized that, um, well, two weeks into the, the launching of the DAO, um, after they raised this money, $80 million were siphoned off because there was uh, some uh, fault in the code. It was the contracts essentially were, were, were big, and, and there was there was you know they were they included too many functions essentially, and uh, or, or in some ways by design, um, and there was a vulnerability, and so the DAO you know was a big catastrophe because it, it was sort of the first light within the ecosystem that drove all of um, this collaborative uh, insight and, and, and expression, um, and, and then it failed right. <clears throat> So then 2017 emerges, um, the first real sort of like killer dap comes about, which is the ICO, um, and, uh, and people start raising quite a bit of money. Um, on the collaborative side of things though, uh, communications began emerging, the core devs um, who are running like clients and key infrastructure within the ecosystem began having weekly calls um, and sort of like start the human sort of collaboration coordination around how this network will continue developing um, into the future. Um, at the same time, ETH Prize was kind of like a core piece of community collaboration. There was a number of Telegram groups that spun off of ETH Prize that were um, focused on like web design as well as um, like community leaders essentially um, who are all organizing in their specific domains um, to sort of just bring together what's going on in everyone's development cycles and how collaborations can continue forming. Um, in 2018, uh, community development started really spiking. There were a number, like there's probably 50 Telegram groups, maybe half of them were started by Peter with like <laughs> 20 to, you know, 100 20 people plus in Telegram it. chats. 20, 20 plus, okay, cool. So 20, Peter's got, you know, in charge of 20. But um, aside from that, like, Communities just started like properly forming. Like people came together and you know started deciding, okay, we need to start building working groups around the specific aspects that um, need uh, attention within the ecosystem. And you know, as Ethereum is and like cryptocurrency is something that touches so many um, pieces of society, of the user interface, as well as like deep backend work, um, and then security on top of that. Uh, it, there's a really broad range in a lot of specific places where, where these communities started forming. Um, so that includes like like second layer solutions like Plasma started having calls, ETH security came together. So a lot of all the security experts within the ecosystem started you know communicating about what the best tools were and the best auditing practices. Um, and then again like Web3 design community formed uh, in March of 2018 the magicians um, came to form, which the ETH magicians, if you're not aware, is kind of a um, work of uh, volunteers, if you guys know Greg Colvin, he was a big part of that, um, who, who sort of are interested in uh, more or less decentralized collaborative uh, governance. Basically, and uh, people were coordinating online, right? right. And like, uh, people needed an offline place to coordinate uh, and meet in person. And the Magicians was created to kind of like create that. Okay, um, for perfect. That. Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel free to keep pushing your comments as well. <laughs> Threw this together pretty quickly, so. Um, that's right, so off, offline communications sort of began. And then um, we started thinking about UX as well in May around Ed, Ed, EdCon. Um, the Meta Cartel was also somewhat incepted in 2018. Um, at, at ETH Berlin or another, I, th I think um, Alex Vandersand came uh, together. It's May. May? Yeah. Okay, May, thank you. Um, so in May, Alex Vandersand announced, I think at EdCon, 
Um, so it was post Egg which they did a UX unconference. Ah, uh, at the unconference. Okay, yeah. that's good. So at the UX unconference, Alex announced um, universal logins and uh, the use of meta transactions to onboard people into the ecosystem in a really seamless way. Um, September that year, the Meta Cartel formed at ETH SF. And this was essentially a group of people who came together, I think at like the Nifty conference at the end of ETH SF, who, who were just like really excited about mass adoption and meta transactions. And mainly because meta transactions was the only tool for like potential mass adoption, right? It was the thing that you can seamlessly bring people into. Um, and the main project that this community sort of uh, came together around was the gas station network, which the idea of that is to sort of to help facilitate the payment of these meta transactions for DAP developers so, so they don't have to sort of worry about it. They can kind of plug into the system and the meta transactions are, are sort of just being paid for by a network of relayers who are um, incentivized. Um, and in October at DevCon, Tabuki, um, kind of came together and sort of solved that issue. And so that was um, the birth of the Meta Cartel. And um, so it was both built around people who came <coughs> together over an idea online, but then met in person at ETHSF. And so it's a nice sort of merging of these online and offline um, community uh, development. This year, um, Moloch uh, sort of emerged. And so, um, Meta Cartel, so there's two things here. Um, and at ETH Denver in February last year, uh, or no, this year, sorry, uh, <laughs> Moloch launched. And Moloch, if uh, you don't know, is essentially a, a, a sort of pared down version of the original DAO. Um, I'll go over a brief overview of like what that contract and process looked like uh, after this. Um, but at the same time, at ETH Denver, the Meta Cartel uh, still had a meetup despite the gas station network being solved, which that was the only thing the Meta Cartel was really about. And so this was like the, the indication that, okay, culture is now forming within this community who care about, um, who like came together over a technical uh, thing, right? Um, and, and so now it's a little even more than just meta transactions and adoption, it's like these people like to hang out, um, <laughs> which is significant. <laughs> it was. Um, and um, in May, uh, Meta Cartel, um, publicly launches their DAO, and they announce that, okay, we're gonna fork um, the Moloch contract. And this is partially you know, because Moloch was so successful, but also because Moloch was only focused on backend infrastructure. Um, that's what it was expressive purpose was, was ETH 2.0 to bring funds together uh, and people together to make collective decisions promoting ETH 2.0. The Meta Cartel came together around application development again, and mass adoption. So things that are driving forward actual user interface um, of uh, blockchain and um, the mass sort of population. Um, so Meta Cartel launched in May, and um, shortly after, the ETH and Consensus joined Moloch, which sort of further validates this new mechanism for community development and resource management. Uh, in June, Meta Cartel starts onboarding their original members into the DAO, and um, and you know since then we've had a demo day where we um, sh uh, showcased uh, four projects that we funded this year. It, it was just a conference, but we called it a demo day. Yeah, it was. It, was, it ended up being just a conference. Yeah, it was. But like, that's okay. <laughs> so the backstory of the name demo day, right? Even though it wasn't really a demo day, it was that only this year, right? We wanted to be able to dab incubator, right? Uh, which eventually turned into the DAO. But you know, we were like, what is an MVP of a dab incubator? A conference where we like front that we be, we have been incubated, but just like launch anyways, right? And hence the name Demo Day. Right. And so a big part of the idea of like being a DAO that's sponsoring application development and user interface is being an incubator and providing some sort of like resources outside of just funding for the projects that we support. Um, and so this, so since then we we have funded is it four projects, Peter? Is that right? Well, around six. Six, six different projects through the DAO, $30,000, um, and raised a total of about 200, um, depending on the price of ETH, right? So, um, <laughs> it goes up and below 1,000 ETH right now as we spend in on more new members. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So we have around 1,000 ETH, though, which is sort of a strong signal, right? Um, in 2020, um, there's a lot of sort of progress and developments and like ideas, and maybe we'll get into it a little bit with this panel, but a big piece of the original DAO that was so exciting was you create a um, collaborative resource aggregation mechanism that can also invest and then 
intake other um, like revenue streams. And so you create a cycle that is self-sustaining rather than just grant giving, which is a, an effect of the um, current design within Moloch. In order to make the minimum viable thing, it was easier to just say, hey everyone, are you excited about this initiative? If you are, put money in here and we're gonna give money to uh, facilitate that. Um, it's not able to receive funds today, the way that it's designed. But um, there's a lot of progress in sort of like thinking about how to do that. So before you get to that, the, the first idea is like, what is a Moloch DAO? <clears throat> and really it's just kind of a multi-sig with voting, which is, um, that's kind of like the, 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 the short, you know, abbreviated version of what- Not a DAO. It's, it's not necessarily a DAO. But isn't it sort of that, but with a rage quit on top of it also? Like rage that's right. Are pretty yeah, it is. No, totally. You're right. And, and so this is uh, just a very, very short, um, you know, this is like the very basic. And I guess with voting, there's a lot attached to the with voting. And so I'm going to go through the, the functions and like the system of what Moloch actually is. Um, so this is what it looks like, from at least from my perspective. Um, and I'm, I'll sort of, it looks a little, right, a little, a little messy, but, um, <laughs> but I'll, um, I'll kind of, I'm done. Oh, yeah, that's right. What's a maximum? That's right. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll sort of uh, go through what all of this sort of is. And the main thing I'm going to discuss is sort of uh, membership types and like this site and then the process of proposal submission um, for the DAO membership. And then a, a couple also functions of what the members are able to do. And so within uh, the DAO, there's, you, you, you have a proposal, and you can make, set that proposal to ask for um, a number of shares based off of the tribute that you offer. And the tribute is just sort of either um, uh, ETH, wrapped ETH, or sweat equity of some sort. So you can ask for um, shares to fund a project, um, or you ask for shares to be a member, right? And so I guess like there's a couple, there's like, you can structure it in a num number of ways. Um, the main th people who submit proposals today is just project and membership. I think that's probably the only type of proposal that's been su submitted thus far. But you could also have a donor who just wants to submit funds to the DAO, doesn't want to deal with the um, membership or um, you know, voting aspect. You could also have um, um, a different type of like tribute versus um, share ask, which um, like you can just like fluctuate that, and then a member who sort of is aborted. Um, that's just another sort of like a proposal that that decides to cancel their um, process before it starts. <clears throat> and so here is the first step of the Moloch process: you submit a proposal by having one of these incumbent members underneath the guild bank um, pushes a small deposit to submit a proposal to the group the broader membership, which is on a timeline. And um, there's a 24 hour period after that, if you, yeah, that little orange box represents this 24 hour period where you can abort if you decide that you wanna cancel that submission. And then, um, but at, once you submit, a voting process starts, and that's a week long voting process. Um, after that, there's a seven day grace period. And the idea behind the grace period, which is one of the fundamental things that was advised to need um, as a function within the original DAO, is that people who decide that the or that that proposal, if it passes, if they decide they don't want to pay for that proposal because they disagree with it, they can leave during this grace period, which is another seven days. Um, so, yeah. So those are the seven days can be configured. Right, and all of this is configurable. That's right. So all the time frames here can change. So you could have like a voting process that's only twenty four hours or an hour, Arches. depending on what you need to vote on and how frequently and, and how quickly, um, what the stakes are that you're actually investing in, right? Like if you have a lot more money invested, you need a longer time in order to account for any risk. Um, but if you have only a little money and you're just trying to vote on proposals really quickly, you can also do that. <clears throat> um, and then the second half of Moloch is just the funding and rage quitting portion. So once a proposal passes um, through the process of like getting voted on, and um, that's also configurable, but I think for now it's usually just 51% of votes need to agree that this is, um, that we want to do this. Um, once it's passed, the shares are deposited into the uh, member's address, and then the or member or project 
also sends tribute of whatever type to the guild bank. Um, and so at that point, that project or member, so if it's a member, they'll take, they'll keep those shares because these shares represent both voting and um, equity or, or a, a proportional amount of the guild bank, right? Um, equity, right? <laughs> Slip there. Um, but it is, yeah, so, so it's both a, a governance and a um, financial uh, token. And then, um, so members will keep it because they want to keep voting on the, on the proposals that are coming through. But a project that is getting funded by the DAO will take shares and then they'll rage quit. And that's one function of the rage, rage quit. The other function, again, is that grace period where a member decides to leave, or at any point if a member just decides, oh, I just want to take my funds back and leave. Um, they can always do that. Um, so yeah, so that's like a very basic overview of like what a mullet process is. Does anyone have any yeah, questions, please? So what happens if the project develops what, what they were funded for, but someone wants to rage quit, and then all the funds are spent? Um, well, oh, okay. So, 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 if if the so funds are spent before someone can rage quit. So oh, like, let's say like a project, yeah. like for all intents and purposes, duped the DAO, and they managed to like show that they've been hitting these timelines, but they weren't really doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then once all the funds had been spent, it sh their product was vapor. Oh. Right. And so when the investors are like, well. This is bullshit. I'm to quit, but there's nothing to get to recoup. There's no funds to take back. You right. Another, you just don't give me more money. I think that's the entire process. That's, so, that's, like, you can fool me that's once, you can't fool me again. That's, yeah, that's, right. that's, that's not an issue with the doubt. That's just a general problem that happens in Silicon Valley. No, totally. I was just, because, like, we have all these minds in here that are thinking about this. That's right. I would say one way, too, that that's mitigated is oftentimes um, people are contributing significant amount of, like, ec sweat equity to the DAO before submitting a proposal for funding. So there's like a relationship if you're going to be submitting a project for funding. That's right. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's milestone based, uh, and if you don't deliver, you just like don't get more money uh, and resources. So what's the, like the timeline then for funding that's distributed? Like, what's the funnel look like? Is it How monthly check-in? How we want to. Yeah. Like, what does it look like today? Or, like, what's a good basis average? It looks like uh, we set milestones for projects, right? And we just agree to fund them to that milestone. Yeah, it's really like ad hoc, like project by pay, project basis, uh, and yeah, there's often like a champion for each proposal, right? Uh, similar, this is similar to Moloch DAO as well, right? Where it's like someone kind of usually takes care of due diligence, uh, recruiting of the right teams to do certain work, or whether the team can do it, and then they set milestones, right? And they're typically like staking their reputation in some way, shape, or form, right? By championing it and backing that project, right? Mm -hmm. The tricky thing is when like you do decide to fund a project, right? But they don't deliver. Right. That's the interesting thing. It's like, what do you do there, right? Um, and I don't think we've had like any real good way of dealing about it, or have needed to deal with that so far. Maybe Mollick might need to soon. Yeah. Well, we're lucky right now because we survived the bear market, and anyone who hasn't been picked up by Google or to work for them is still developing and probably gives a shit about what they're putting and getting mm -hmm. yeah. out there. But come the next bull run, when anybody's gonna jump in and just slap blockchain on their project, mm -hmm. this probably will be an issue that we have to think about. That's right. It's, it, there's actually an interesting project that's being developed within the Meta Cartel, uh, which is a TCR of projects, mm -hmm. and the idea is that so we have, registry. right, yeah. and, and the idea is that we have community members who are holders of the TCR token, mm -hmm. who have sort of skin in the game in terms of wanting to make sure that valuable projects are being represented within the TCR, so so that you can kind of cut out any of the fluff that kind of you're describing it, in a bull market. It doesn't solve for like the scam part of it either, but like uh, membership and like recruitment isn't necessarily like a one upfront event either. It's like an ongoing, right? So you're constantly potentially having inflow of revenue into the DAO as you're sending out funds. So it's not just about like that, you know, a lot of people will think it's like there's this inception and then you're, you're just spending the money, but like, that's a, that's a give and take. It's concept. a turnstile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is stuff that we're trying to figure out now before the next bull run. Yeah. <laughs> right? And this is why it's like this interesting shelling point where, you know, everyone uh, in a bear market is like heads down, but we're trying to actually uh, figure it out now. So we're, we're actively, forcefully trying to push forward. Well, we have this cover of the bear market mm -hmm. uh, because we know when 
the bull market comes around again, there's going to be a lot of noise. Yeah. So it's almost like we kind of hope that this bear market lasts a little bit longer yeah. <laughs> until we figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because as we were like trying to launch um, uh, Metacontro Dow during June, right, or May, that was when like Eve price, the price of Eve was like starting to recover for like fuck. Right? Like, <laughs> it's like this is not a good sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, I wish we had another year of like bull, uh, I mean bear market, and we kind of do. It's like it didn't take off, but it was like I'm glad. Uh, I, I hope this kind of this can, these like uh, community sentiments and conditions continue on for like another year or plus, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Isn't right. this kind of where like circles of trust come into play, where it's like, hey, who knows this person? Mm -hmm. you know, if right. everybody knows this person, then Genius. there's a higher chance that they will uh, fulfill the, uh, their obligation because mm -hmm. they're already connected we're, to the other people. As, uh, as we're starting to realize too, like the social capital is actually worth more than the fiscal. And right. so if you burn the Dow, it's gonna work the other way, right? So like if you're if you're labeled as a scammer or you break burn relationships with all those other members and projects that are participants, like that's what, that's what probably hurts you more yeah. than any money. Right. Yeah. Having, yeah. having funded a fair amount of knowledge work in my day, I'd say I'd encourage you guys to think about this design problem less in terms of a binary this is a scam versus this is not. Mm -hmm. Um on Gitcoin, very few of our disputes or arguments come because someone's a scam. Comes because someone bit off where they can they can chew or like yeah, I sure. got sick or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they just like it didn't follow through and sometimes it's a zero it's between that zero and one mm -hmm. right. designed for that too mm -hmm. right and I think that's what we've learned in these last couple of days where it's actually really not so much about the technology it's about having that human element and being able to have that empathy and understanding what's happening uh, because collectively we're just people coming together, mm -hmm. right? And so you could try to codify like reputation right. points and like, did you do this on time or not? Uh, but yeah, and, and there's gonna be great things, and you, there's always gonna be human judgment, and you need yeah. to like have that empathy to deal with that, right? Like in the end, it's about people, not like technology and like consensus mechanisms. Yeah, isn't sort of codifying that more of like the role of a workforce platform, like? looking for gig employees to kind of fulfill the role of like a corporate-like structure, whereas this is, I have an idea, I want to see this get built in the ecosystem, and it's not necessarily for like an entity. Um, well, I mean, I'd say, I feel like I'm somewhat uniquely yeah. qualified to talk about this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's bottoms up versus top down, it's just two different ways of looking at it. They're both valid strategies. No, 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 I think this is great. Um, I, I think this is what, like, like looking back and like, it's impossible to connect the dots moving forward, but looking back, what we've seen and why like, we have this momentum, I think it's because whether we intentionally wanted to or not, uh, we, are, we, we dealt, it, dealt with these issues, not from like, a code perspective or points or like a you know, pure game theory perspective, but from like, a human perspective. Yeah. <laughs> and you can never take that human element out of it. And that's the core of what we're doing. And this is where, what we can't forget, yeah. is that we're humans. And I think so early as well, like to, to, to your point, given about like how, you know, if, if someone was sick or they couldn't deliver because of X or Y, it's actually like, well, hopefully the DAO will be aware of that, right? And, and collectively, especially early on, so much effort is <coughs> being put into these individual given projects, whether it's social capital or fiscal capital or time, energy, whatever, there's that facilitation happening because everyone's so behind the idea. Where actually, like, if you're sick for a week or your dog dies, that's fine, you know, no problem. Like, hopefully the DAO can sort of carry that weight because we want to see the overall project succeed. Oh, they want to see like people succeed <clears throat> in the sense that like, well, we've spent this week like kind of like we're workshopping, right? Um, reflecting what we've done, just like retrospecting, right? And also coming together and like getting down our values. And one of them is like people over technology, right? It's about people, right? Uh, and it's like uh, well, a big focus is like investing into the community, right? And making sure that people succeed. Mm -hmm. And then like, it's failure is okay, yeah, right? Like failure is okay, um, you know, and you know, it's about learning. You know, it's just like one of how a conclusion came uh, around uh, about, right? Um, but yeah. yeah. Success in delivering and then the failure of the project too is, is acceptable. <coughs> that can always occur, right? There's just no attraction even though it was built correctly or whatever. Mm -hmm. we, the yeah. hypothesis was incorrect, essentially. But that's, that's a learning, you know, so. And that's, this is a, a, lot of, a lot of this talk is sort of a core principle of what we're developing in the Meta Cartel is, is like shipping. And experimenting as as quickly as possible, um, and specifically with application layer, like tooling and, and the interface, where <coughs> users are coming in and actually um, interacting with the blockchain. 
so that's those are sort of the core focuses, and we're trying to, you know, we're able, we're uniquely positioned because we're able to make leaps and take steps that other people can't, um, primarily because we, um, we've, we've come together specifically for this. We're crazy. We're crazy, yeah, because we have nothing to lose. Let's be honest, like, yeah. like we, we're, we're a bit blind, we're a bit, like, blind, and, like, we have somehow able to, like, we just, like, one of our other values is just, like, embrace chaos. Just like y'all, like have fun y'all, and I think like <laughs> you have to be a bit stupid and naive to do that. Yeah. To be honest, right? And I think we are just kind of we have that ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> um, like we don't, yeah. like we're not, we don't make exactly, we don't make super sound decisions all the time. I mean, like one of the example was like we have a dancing chili first of year for as a as a logo. Uh, how do we get there? No clue. To be honest, yeah. uh, That's but, the best way to get there. Yeah. Right. It's like. Somehow we're here. It's called serendipity. Right. Sure. Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, next up, we have Garrett. He's gonna come and, and talk a little bit about what we've been what we've been doing the past couple days. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. You find a link there that goes into our public Telegram chat, and you can just like pop in, ask any questions, right? That you wanna you wanna ask, basically. And we're fairly reachable, uh, both Telegram and Twitter. Okay, cool. Everybody, I'm Garrett, um, newbie to Medico Tell um, which is why I spent some of today taking notes and just kind of like summarizing what we've been up to the past two years for everybody. Um, so basically we all came together because we had a few different goals and a few of them were to really define, like it was the first time that all of Medical Hotel came together as like, in, in one place, or a lot of the members who were able to. I, I um, met James Young the first time like a couple of days ago. Like, yeah. Like this. <laughs> like these two guys yeah. are like, <laughs> like and we've been talking quite constantly for this is last, since last year. Oh October. wait. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's like based on Holy shit. Well, Australia. I, I fly around. Australia. I'm from like Australia, but. Are you the whole crew? But is this like a decentralized team? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Team? Like, for like, yeah. We just like start talking uh, like as random strangers, like through community chats. But yeah. Communicate uh, across probably three continents on a weekly basis? Cool. Yeah. Four times. Four times. Four times. Four times. Four times. Yeah, four, yeah, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite global. Um, yeah, so basically we. There are a couple lessons, like something that we like titled one of the notes was Wisdom of the Tao. Um, and one of the big notes is that like we, we need to create something that's sustainable. So, so far, DAOs have created um, pretty much like grant giving platforms where we're crowdsourcing information, where um, we're able to access a lot of interesting deals that like a lot of top venture funds and other like angel investors wouldn't have access to just because of like the way that we're structured is much more interesting, much more compatible and aligned with like the core values of why a lot of people are interested in cryptocurrency and decentralized communities, companies in the first place. They seem to be uh, they seem to be getting hints that the DAOs are fairly 
a decent allocated uh, money in the community. Yeah. Uh, at the minimum, mm -hmm. right? Uh, from the few, few data points that we have kind of experienced. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, like one big thing that we saw is like we're not trying to like kind of like replace EF or something like that. We we want to be the kind of like guys who are not afraid of um, you know people like making fun of us for failing or for like funding a project that doesn't work if it's potentially something that's so innovative that can push the space forward like nothing else. Um, we want to be the ones that are able to do that. So that's something that's pretty important. And like the EF we agreed is actually paralyzed by a need to be perfect. Um, I mean, so that, that is like a really strong word, but it's like, a, it's, it's something that is important for the community, for them to well, have well, this well, like, yeah, well, we walk at the EF. Yeah. The friends. Yeah, uh, totally. Honestly, right? totally. Like, and, um, you know, <laughs> like, it, it's like, yes, it's like the, the EF has to politically navigate itself, right? Because it's in the middle of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, whereas we have like this, we have, set, like, we have a weird dance in Chile, that we can just like <laughs> hide behind. Pretty much, yeah. and then scrape up half like our failures on right. It's like it's a damn good chili. What did you expect? Position, what, right? did you, <laughs> yeah, what did you expect? Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah. so we came up with like a VO.1 of the mission statement, and it's be the example which unlocks the minds and confidence necessary for humanity to evolve into a freer default state. And I think it's something that we can all get behind. Um, so yeah, and we took a little uh, stock of basically who we are and what we're good at. And this is like a visualization that we come out with. Um, so yeah, we're a pretty well-rounded team. But, this is just um, the members that we're just the members that we're there today. Not the entire I mean, the reason why we did this was basically to figure out how do we divide and conquer tasks, right? And it was yeah. like, then it was like, oh, who do we have in the room? Like, yeah. who's doing, who's good at what, right? Yeah. Uh, just like this is like a quick survey to just map that out. Yeah. So that's that. Um, and then. We went over a little bit of like thesis, next steps, and we have some really exciting announcements to make that we're going to plan on doing at ETH Waterloo. So, um, but like some of those were around just like announcing our values and our culture and our mission statement. Um, but basically, like we're we're going to be able to focus on all these different topics listed here. Um, and something that's yeah really exciting to me is basically taking um, the move from this current DAO, which is a fantastic platform for funding a lots of like interesting projects that are pushing the space forward and transitioning um, and creating a parallel uh, DAO that exists as a revenue generating DAO. And this is a big announcement that we're gearing up for making at ETH Waterloo. Um, and that was a lot of the intention of like getting people mobilized around that today. Um, but one of the big things that we're going to focus on now is onboarding. So to really make impact, to really shift things forward, we need to grow the community even more. Um, it's been huge so far. There are like over 200 people in the Telegram group that Peter started. There's 600 like, unique, unique members over 600, 20 plus 600 chats. members over 20 chats. <laughs> a lot better to say it that way. Um, and yeah, so there's I a lot of it. Actually, I copied all the usernames <laughs> on every chat. Like, yeah, I just like got the whole list, control A, copy, paste, and then like did an Excel spreadsheet where I like found like basically counted all the like unique uh, usernames. It was also just curious one day. Yeah, it's probably faster than figuring out the API. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's about all from my side. Um, and yeah, super excited to be here. Yes. So you guys are doing like awesome stuff, and you're a global team. Uh, but a lot of times, other people want some face-to-face -face interactions. So what do like local efforts look like when you're trying to incubate a project that you funded? Do you have even local teams yet? Is that even a conversation? Sometimes. We try and organize around like existing events, right? Because those we can just leverage the fact like uh, dev cons, hackathons, all those things. Uh -huh. So we actually on the back of our it was kind of formed out of uh, uh, San Francisco eighteen, and like after that, the next events we uh, we did <coughs> MCC, we did like a secondary meetup, uh, ETH, uh, ETH Denver, we did like a secondary meetup. So like those have been really effective too. To your point, um, those you guys are like traveling like a swarm. It's more uh, some coming some together at those of events well, anyway, yeah. so it's, and, and other people who are, would be interested in this space or this potential obviously are, are there as well, so it, it makes sense, but we're talking about how we can actually do that more async and more specific to geographic location, like bigger cities that we know have like popular, like Denver, yeah, obviously. Yeah, right. you know. I mean, in, uh, with different events, right, you'll find patches of various members, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you'll, you'll find like uh, five to six uh, members of Medicato, like at the every uh, like event, I mean, or kind of conference, just like, you no, know, everyone's there all the time, because that'd be insanity. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but you know, like within reason. But sometimes, like for example, uh, today and these couple of days, right, we realize it's important to just like meet regardless, right, or within that. And your your question was about uh, supporting projects, though, specifically right, yeah. that we're funding. Yeah, like, uh, are there any like regional or local hubs that you're starting to see sort of this interest driving, and then like are they starting to like self select and just need on their own? Uh, I'd say the community. I mean, it's remote first, right? And that, yeah. that's that's definitely the focus is kind of coordinating remotely. Mm -hmm. um, as we scale, communities will certainly sort of start emerging, and I, that's 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 definitely one of our goals. You know, I argue that we'd encourage them. like if we saw something popping up out of like Denver specifically, we'd say like. Fork, create like a Denver-based Moloch, and and what it make, make make your focus specific to your needs, or like what you want to do as well, right? Or it could be a what's great about it? Just pop another one up, even if it's for a, a transient, like we were talking about this earlier, like a transient thing, like, like it OG. lasts only three months, it, or it's a specific event and a specific problem. You finish it, you close down the dev. The, I think we're gonna see those explorations uh, a lot more and instead of these monolithic huge like endeavors with thousands of members like that's a great goal or like, there may be that and then like the yeah, sub DAOs yeah. underneath that you know sure obviously yeah cascading DAOs but I, I think what's really interesting to me is to see these like smaller one-off like very hyper focused mission or goal uh, DAOs so I think that would be like really really interesting to watch also kind of like fun fact that I just noticed because I, I pursued in the first DAO and I was just going and looking at the the like uh, page of that before um, but also by the way, Satoshi said never delete keys. Craig Wright, it's not Satoshi. I <laughs> get <laughs> <laughs> It would take literally just this long to prove it. Click the button, verify, signature, oh, look at that. Success. Um, <laughs> but, the, but if you do the math here, there's about a little bit less than 1% of the tokens that actually weren't redeemed from the original DAO, and that's $18 million right now, which is kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, so there's still $18 million in the original DAO, effectively. Wow. <laughs> so that's just kind of a fun fact that I found today. <laughs> um, so now we can move on to the panel. I bet they wish to have a with Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>Here we'll go for something like a half an hour, or I can throw a few things your way since we're all here together. And uh, then we've had some great questions already, some great conversations. So let's do that. Cool. Is there a Hey guys. So, gals, man, I'd say one of the things that's pressing most on our mind, so we've heard some of what you guys are up to this, this past few few days, right? Um, and you also talked a little bit about like, joining the community for MetaCartel. So what exactly in your mind does joining mean? Like, do I actually have to go ahead and put in some skin in the game? Am I becoming a member officially in the DAO on Ethereum? Or am I joining the community? What does that look like? Oh. So, I mean, we have the MetaCartel community, right? And then we have the MetaCartel DAO, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of see this as like, uh, this, I guess like nest, the DAO being nested within the Meta Cartel community, right? Like the Meta Cartel community, we have like various Telegram chats and with like main ones and side ones, right? And we run community events like and get everyone involved, right? But then we have the DAO that's more focused on like allocating funding, right? Uh, and funding important initiatives, right? That we believe in the useful, right? Example. Um, so I guess like you know. The interesting thing about like um, being part of the metacartel community is that most people can just get involved and engage, right, and join the chats and you know like uh, I guess collaborate with us, right? And I guess in terms of the DAO membership, in terms of onboarding, we actually realized recently, I mean, that you don't necessarily have to be, uh, you don't actually need to have shares to be onboarded into the DAO. Like interestingly enough, right, Darren here. Um, it came to the camp, right, <laughs> and flew from Portland, like, but he, he had already been pretty much, like, onboarded to the DAO. He kind of, like, I guess, walked on uh, Yang DAO, right, which is kind of like a Metacons of collaboration with uh, me, and, right, and, like, um, he also has been starting a new project that he wants to kind of, like, uh, launch, right, and that we're looking to support, but yet he doesn't have shares, right? So it's actually very possible to actually kind of, like, actually onboard into not only the community, but the Metacons of DAO, right, um, without, you know, actually, having shares or even needing to pledge. You can either get shares by working, uh, contributing to projects that we're working on, right? Our campaigns, 
or you can basically pledge a minimum of like 10 ETH, right, which is about like less money than $2,000, I think, or roughly about now, right? Yeah, definitely now, yeah. Right, and, and different, yeah, and like, you know, I'll, you know, we have different people who've like earned their win, their way in, and other people have pledged, right? I mean, uh, we've had, you know, Alex just like earn his way in by kind of helping run meetups and need event times, right? And just contribute to other Metacartel like DAO internal projects, right? It's creating value. Right, like you, anyone can actually contribute to a Metacartel like campaign or internal mm -hmm. project, right? By just joining the chat and just like attending the calls, right? And just like saying, I want to help, yeah. right? Sharing and, useful information, helping someone else find another piece of useful information. Right, I mean, like, I mean, a good example would be, like, like, you know, Darren, how did you get involved? Started with Yang Dao, I think. Yeah, right. And then there was a proposal of Moloch for shares from Yang Dao. So that, that was like a couple shares of Moloch. And at that point, I was like watching it from the inside, and I could see the community, I could see more of the culture. Um, and then, like, the human aspect first was like a gravity that I feel like pulls you in. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot going on from like a technical DAO perspective and from a community DAO perspective. And there's a lot to learn by trading each side, whether it's just like proposals to start off with or maybe there's more stuff we're gonna add or putting a, a rage quitting into Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> so now hearing more about Metacartel now, we, we hear about other DAOs though that are not subordinate by any means, but are like impressed upon by what you guys are doing and then collaborating with you. So how much do we see these other DAOs that are like under, so to speak, Metacartel versus now like attaching to and collaborating with on, like, on the same level? Are you, well, yeah, I think they're all on the same level. I don't know if there is any under okay. or over. Yeah. It's just different objectives, right? Different well, objectives. It's just different parties. I, yeah. I think and different interesting, parties. interestingly on that was like a takeaway for, big takeaway for me from Osaka was the difference between a DAO where you know, the majority of people contributing to Aragon either have Aragon tokens or are being paid by Aragon directly, right? And the DAO stack example is the same and, and, and Colony the same. And in, in this example, um, th that's not the case, right? We, there's not any direct financial or di even direct you know, incentive to sort of get aligned. It's actually that the idea set and what's being built towards is the incentive. Um, so I think that's like a, a key difference. It's a key difference. It's pretty good. I mean, you could technically argue like shares are tokens, but but it's different. I believe even just in the, like changing the lexicon, we've done something to to your point where like the energy is motivated by not like the fiscal benefit, mm -hmm. it's motivated motivated by like the value created and the possibility. Like shit, like getting DAO shares really a formality in most senses. It's like cool, you know, <laughs> should have done this a while ago. Mm -hmm. What are those shares represented by? Are they just like a piece of the code? Or are they non fungible tokens? How do you uh, how do you like show actual ownership of a share? Yeah, they they are non transferable, non fungible. Okay. So like when you create a DAO, you say like there's gonna be a thousand NFTs, and then you distribute them, or you just mint them whenever you want. Why are they not As transferable? The DAO, the DAO itself can mint shares whenever you want. And then if you get kicked out of the DAO, are they burnt? You can't get kicked out of that right now, but you will be very soon. Yeah, but you burn the shares. <laughs> Someone will be kicked out soon. Yeah, sneak peek, sneak peek. But, uh, so yeah, but you, to, so shares, yeah, you have shares, which mean you can vote in the DAO. Um, and that's, and like, so even most grant, like people who have received grants have received shares. And then it's their choice at that point to keep the shares as voting power because they're like, oh, it's, uh, important to be in this community, and I'd rather like have the uh, the social signal and uh, to be a part of the conversation much more than I would like. Or I could burn the shares and yeah. go take some money and have a pizza party or whatever. <laughs> so, but so there's like a user choice there between like burning the shares for capital or maintaining community governance. And yeah. just just to clarify for my own, um, why is it non-transferable? Hijacking. You don't want to brain. Yeah, yeah. Like you need to earn your way by either like working or contributing. The only you don't want a secondary market. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like you, that. You don't want people so selling, selling your governments. Yeah, it's 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 just it, you you want it makes it process. It makes it uh, standardized, so everyone is entering the same way in terms of having voting power. So you yeah. have to go through the proposal process. So so like, like, a lot. What's like the identity protocol then? Is it just by like consensus of the group, or social are you consensus. given like a, an actual like? 
on a blockchain identity. Yeah, so, that's, so social consensus is what it is now, but that doesn't really scale. So in the future, I think it would be great if we can basically say like, oh, this is a wallet that we definitely know is this person. Like mm -hmm. they have like the ENS for their name at that wallet. Yeah, they yeah, own yeah, a bunch yeah. of other tokens at that wallet. They verify their and, identity. And then, yeah, they are going to be really the to bots sell yeah, their yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a nice new discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I don't want to stop it. But this is a key point, right? right. Um, we're talking about this loose kind of, well, shares are kind of social credit or something. How much are we tracking decentralized identity here? Like, yeah. uh, we talk about Except these- the organization. Well, well wait, wait. Whatever so we have this um, pseudonymous like undercurrent mm -hmm. in blockchains. Yep. But specifically in DAOs, this seems to be completely blown up. Nobody's talking about somewhat anonymous avatars who are interacting with the DAOs. Yeah. Now, where do you see this? Well, so like technically Moloch is not Decentralized, yeah. it's not really autonomous mm -hmm, right. either, right? It's permission. Or just a multi sig. Yeah, it's a multi sig. And, uh, you know, yeah, not you, a real doubt. You, you have to come in uh, through a champion. Right. And that's that human element of right. it. Um, and so, identity uh, and all of that is this, like, I think, big rabbit hole yeah. that you can, it's like never ending. Yeah. And so, so what we wanted to do, and this is part of the kind of ethos of, of Meta Cartel, and I think of like Moloch, which is like an MVP, is just do the minimum to be able to start coordinating, yeah. and then figure out it along the way. Yeah. We don't claim to, or we might not ever solve identity, yeah. Yeah. right? And so what we have control over is being able to have this permission system where we can like know who's coming in, and we don't want to provide a right. general solution. Right. Our goal, our kind of like kind of ethos is like we just gotta iterate. Yeah. What's the smallest step in order to get to that next iteration? So, yeah. so basically, right, identity and you know reputation are kind of these rabbit holes that can go on eternally, right? You can't have perfect solutions, right? But what we are seeing is that we are like actually beginning to develop these internally within our DAO, mm -hmm. right? Um, like to basically actually increase the efficiency of how we or, or firstly allocate capital as well as allocate work and identify who's available for work, right? And also assign, like, basically enable trust within the DAO so that it can socially scale, right? Because if someone brings everyone in, they create a click, right? Mm -hmm. And then no one can really trust each other. Like, what do you trust, right? But what if you have consensus over this, like, maybe this imperfect number or metric, right, that can help guide your uh, indication of how much you should trust someone, right? Yeah. And we have this game called uh, Pepper 4D, uh, created by Eric Arsenal, right? I'm not, is that you? I see your last name. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you're the author, you're the author of Pepper 4D. You know, you want to give a short, like... Yeah, it's a, it's a game that allows people... It, it's basically a visualization of the DAO networks, where your contributions to various DAOs gets visualized in this game, and you can... You can, you can see visually who the different actors are, how much they've uh, contributed to the DAO. Um, even like different DAOs, you can see which DAOs have contributed more value just by their, their, their size on the game, for example. So it's a visualization of these, these networks um, to make and, it easier for people. And to we understand. started this off with a really practical like, goal. Like, you know, people aren't being rewarded uh, with DAO shares for every piece of work they're doing for the DAO, right? So how do we reward and acknowledge what we've done for the DAO, right? Aside from DAO shares and money, which is which are actually high, fairly high friction to actually distribute. And the solution was actually just like reward people. We started out with like the uh, ethos of idea or the core idea of like let's reward people for fun NFTs for doing work for the DAO, right? <laughs> like simple as that. And that kind of evolved into like this, I guess like um, game known as Pepper 40, uh, which will soon be, soon be released later. So I think what I see a lot of, uh, we got a question. Yeah, a question. Um, so I presume it's uh, like one token, one vote, as opposed to one person, one vote. So is there any yeah. guard in place to prevent somebody from buying voting power? Social consensus. So it's, it's a permission DAO in the sense that like, we have to agree to let someone in, right? We uh, vote on it. Yeah, and we vote That's on it, right? That's a proposal. But so. a lot of like due diligence is done into like, should we either let this person in? You know, are we okay with For having- how much? how many shares, right? And you know, if someone's anonymous, we try to actually understand whether someone can vouch for them, right? Uh, and for mostly, it's like, if they're not like, 
terrible rain. I was very careful like, if they're not something. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot, of, there's a lot of things I could have just like <laughs> stepped into. Yeah. Um, inter yeah, interesting data point for us. Like, so we have like primarily 100 ETH members and then 10 ETH members. Um, there's some like in between, but that's like mostly, mostly the composition. And the 100 ETH members are ten, ten, typically like projects. So th and that is a cap. Or currently, yes, but we could yeah. we could explore, we, or we could explore a donor model where someone is donating more and getting limited governance or no governance. There's less possibility. But well, what's more interesting, I, I think, uh, on this point is that what we've seen is actually the uh, <coughs> participation, the active participation of the ten members highly outweighs the hundred men members. A lot of them just like mm -hmm. here's the money and disappear. Mm -hmm. Well, the and that's so you like the, the fear the of like true. someone would come in and use their voting power to move them. Like just because that ha hasn't happened here doesn't mean it won't. But it's just it's interesting to see that actually the opposite. The, the people who are like put in less are almost more hungry to like participate in this and to move it in a direction that they see. Is, but um, yes, that is a pitfall that we will probably step into, and hence why with the uh, next uh, the revenue generating DAO that we want to launch right next year, uh, we will have uh, Moloch V two. Uh, Molok with TLDR guild kick, as in you can kick people, uh, uh -huh. yeah. as in, and you can force people to rage quit uh, with their shares. Well, I think one thing that's interesting that's worth bringing into the conversation is uh, there's a proposal by Glenn Weil that you might know about is the quadratic voting, mm -hmm. and it's implemented here in the state of Colorado on a state mm -hmm. level in the government, and so it's just an interesting concept that could play into you know the voting conversation. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. There's always like a solid consensus. We do yeah. like. Before every proposal, just us talking through different town lines. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think a, a quadratic voting kind of model for that would be actually kind of really cool. Yeah, with the collective kind of, this, kind of yeah, yeah. The, you know the soft feeling before we put right. a proposal up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Prediction that, market. Yeah. We yeah. should have laid to we should be using like Pepper 4 d to create like laid to reputation, which we can then use to quadratically like signal, right? Um, like that, I mean that that was kind of like the idea of like Pepper 4 d and reputation, right? On top of the DAO. It's like Yes, like you know, your shares don't indicate how much work you've done, right? But maybe we can create like a decoupled like uh, number that we can assign value to, right? To signal that you know these people who have done work for the DAO are signaling this way, right? And hopefully, like so, that can actually enable right. action and like see you know who's influencing votes with just That's pure shares. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask kind of a leading question then is when we talk about a DAO, which is decentralized autonomous organization, and there's no decentralization or autonomy here, right? But we're iterating just towards yeah. something maybe. maybe but what, yeah. the thing that I see all of this is we have this fantastic uh, now on uh, a ledger of some kind, whether it's mutable or not. We're, we're writing all of this how we how we operated. So how much are you guys looking at this data and trying to piece like the history that has come from what you have all this collaboration to see if you can automate some of that stuff? I, I think that, that question is kind of like saying, well, how well can you look at an organization just by looking at the payroll, mm -hmm. right? So like. But it's more than payroll, right? Because we have this voting consensus mechanisms that are now baked into this. So yeah. we know where the money and these soft social decisions yeah. are all kind of bundled together. Well, we kind of know, like, I think socially we've come to a decision and then it's just uh, the record keeping happens. Um, so the record keeping is decentralized. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that's where the blockchain comes in. Uh, but it's <laughs> like we as a group, and if you have this context, where you know you're at the group from the beginning, you don't necessarily need to look or look at the accounting of the blockchain because you've been there in the conversations. I think though that may become important as the organization grows for people to kind of have like a trusted source of truth, which is the blockchain, to like true. reconstruct that history yeah. and verify whether what people are saying is true. Yeah. But are the votes on the chain? Yes. yes. So that part is transparent. Yes. yes. You can go look at all of our proposals and see every single one and how all addresses voted and cool. right, all that stuff is transparent. Yes. I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do around that though right. to inform a community so, more. Yeah, and yeah. What we have to explore, we haven't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here's one of the things is that, you know, well, DAOs are just, it's a fancy word for a group of people, right? Yeah. Uh, coordinating with different uh, base uh, layer of governance, right? With distributed power. Yeah, like with a different governance model, essentially, right? But we've had groups of people for a long time, and it's, you know, like, we're just dealing with people, right? In the end, it's people, it's not like, you know, it, like, 
there's always going to be people involved, right? Uh, yeah, like you can't get away from that. And I think a lot of people... You can't get away from that. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't really want to. Yeah. Like, if, shit, if, if we can make it autonomous, fuck me. Yeah, that makes it out much easier. Like, trust me, we're trying. But, you know, like, trust, like, we are trying really, really hard to make it autonomous. But, you know, this is like what we're dealing with. And this is the, you know, we're not going to pretend like, you know, it's something that's not right. So. Yes, we're probably a glorified multisig, but you know, how can we like, you know, use like this new um, form basically of governance, right? We to create to create new um, to enable new markets, to enable new forms of coordination that would never previously been able to exist, right? Like Moloch would never really be uh, really come into life, or would never really exist, right? It like coordinated two hundred thousand dollars from like what like twenty forty people, right? Uh, from like day one. And like, imagine a red tape to kind of form that kind of entity, right? And the, it, it just like took like a dollar on chain to deploy the contract, and there you go, we have, and you start putting people in the DAO, right? Like Meta Cartel, we set up like 700 ETH, right? Like barely $100,000. Um, and you know, you know, we would have like went home if we just had like <laughs> the previous like, you know, uh, systems, and we just like dealing with all this red tape, you know, like, and RG, it's just like, Yes, it's a glorified multisig, but did it coordinate uh, whiskey bar tasting in Osaka? Yes, it did. You know, uh, did you know? <laughs> did did, 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 did Moloch yeah. kind of like coordinate like you know over a million dollars in uh, in funding from the community, then autonomously kind of like distribute this to the right projects in the ecosystem that either the EF would be too slow to fund? Yes, it did. Right? Um, you know, did our guy get the needed funding immediately straight away? Right uh, to get its audit done and you know get the relevant funding to complete smart contract development for 1.0 without going through so much red tape. Yes, it did. Right, like it's a, it's enabling coordination uh, in areas that previously were too small to coordinate in. Right, and, and the truth is, it's like I don't really give a shit what's a DAO not, but like I'm creating value that really never has been existed before. Right, that's like really the question I think we should be asking. It's like, can it enable new forms of coordination? So, uh, I think. The, we talked a little bit about ways to identify like all the interactions that are happening, uh, like a game, or some way to identify like where the failures happen, and that we can track like for instance an individual's reputation on this stuff. I think it would be really interesting to see where we go eventually with that. Um, so I wonder if you could speak to diving more into that that realm. Is like how much do you guys now uh, are are you looking to do some of this tracking? Um, more formal than it already exists. Right. Oh yeah, oh, we have a Figma board. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, full no, of memes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so that, <laughs> this is a core part of the, the initiative and what we're developing and what needs to continue maturing and, and emerging is the yeah. data-driven decision making and um, yeah. analysis of our progress as a DAO and that would the be projects. As as possible. End of the project. And so I guess the next phase is what, what I'm really excited about what you guys are doing, right? Is a revenue generating down now, distributing those funds for work done, right? More than just a granting system. And legally. So, yeah, yeah. What? What? And legally. And legally. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Is uh, what are the legal implications and where? Because the laws are totally oh, where so you are more, more than anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so the legal implications of. Uh, like distributing funding. Um, so today, like we can distribute funds and pay people essentially through DAOs, and that's like an arguable thing. Like these DAOs, despite not being incorporated, um, are uh, identified as entities within the court of law, potentially, if there was ever to be a court case that like, came up with these, right? How um, did you determine that? Uh, through a lot of consultation. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Law's law opinion. Keep various, going, but I want to ask you about references later. Okay. <laughs> various domain um, experts, yeah. Yeah, um, like pretty much the, the, the only lawyers in the space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can talk a little bit about like um, security token and how to uh, distribute, or how to create security tokens or tokens that represent either revenue or equity of a project um, and distribute that to both investors and um, contributors to that project. Um, and and you know the, the parameters mainly for sort of uh, allowing for that and, and preventing from the SEC for like coming after you before you have to like apply for any sort of regulation. You can um, you can essentially have a hundred people involved that are um, either contributors again or in investors into this project, 
um, and they can hold these tokens that either give them like a claim on, claim on revenue or potentially a sort of equity stake in that project. Um, and as long as they also, um, there's also likely a vesting period involved with their initial uh, receipt of those tokens. And then, um, uh, so, so yeah, and, and then as long as the project is under a $10 million asset mark, mm -hmm. um, it's not considered public. So essentially, if you are over 100 members, you could be a public company. If you have more than $10 million under asset management, you could also become, uh, you're also considered liable to be um, considered as a public company. And you register the so this might be a curious thing. We talk about all these like DAOs that come together. Could we effectively get around some of this regulation by having a cap like Hard programs to yeah. 100 people at 10 million. And Maybe. Yeah. So it's very possible. Or just yeah. go yeah. Yeah. Or send it to another one. Yeah. 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 And see, yeah. that's the thing is that like the the field is wide open, right? Right. As long at the end of the day, it's all about um, making sure that the intentions behind all of these projects are clear, um, because nothing really matters until someone you know sues you. That's really the main thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> or if the SEC decides, you know, oh, you guys are making right. too much money or yeah. something, right? Um, uh, and they, they want to prove a point. And so as long as intentions are well-defined and um, people are sort of playing nicely, and that's a big part of why a permission DAO system is actually useful, because you get to like assess culture fit before bringing people into that community. <laughs> and DAO, um, and like, DAO and token or whatever, like both, both sides, right? Uh, like uh, DAO shared distribution is quite important, right? Of like who's incentivized and who are aligned who, right? Like, you know, when, yeah, it's like, you want to use that as an incentive uh, line mechanism, and that wouldn't really work if, like, a majority of the incentives who contribute, contribute to the DAO, right, uh, were just, like, whales, right, uh, in one sense. So it's like, it's like <coughs> a careful balance, I feel, right, of both, like, uh, if you want to, to be a community-driven and incentivized DAO, right, uh, you should uh, basically have a large uh, snapshot of the community in that DAO, uh, right, to reflect that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, like, what are the uh, sizes of funding requests from projects that are asking to get grants? Are we talking like twenty five hundred? Are we talking like one point two million? Oh well, yeah, yeah. we only have a, like a couple hundred k in the bank. So, <laughs> yes. pretty sure yeah. that proposal would fail. I mean, <laughs> basically, okay. Well, based to DL, a lot of what we've been doing is like. A lot of projects have been asking to get tweeted out by us, right? And then the money's like a slap on the side. And maybe we get like cheaper audits, right, from like Quantsnet. Like they've been giving giving us like uh, supported like uh, like audit like audits, right? Where our projects that we support get a deal, and we've been extremely uh, grateful um, by the from the by the support essentially, right? So um, you're providing like a suite of resources, then not just like we're going to give you money, we're also going to give you marketing help. Yeah, I think the <laughs> like we, we help projects. Social capital transfers have been much more right. voluminous. I would, say, I would say. We've yeah, been, we, the social capital actually kind of outshadows the financial oh, yeah. capital. I, I think that, so. that is really because we are a DAO that is erring on the side of action. Mm -hmm. And so we get people that are, the shelling point is people that want to get things done. And so this is how we gain and provide more momentum. Mm -hmm. and we want to be the first tweet. To help each other. Yeah. 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 And in, in some ways, um, like the open source, open source development, is, is built off of reputation and social capital. Mm -hmm. And so this is a nice merger yeah. of like a hybrid solution where you have the social capital, but the, the bane of open source development is like, it's severely underfunded. Right. Severely, right? right? This guy knows more than anybody. Right, <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. whole and, job. And recently, <laughs> this out. And recently and so, with the um, CLR a matching a match funding through uh, the Gitcoin grants, right? <clears throat> One of the projects that we did support called Ardai, right? Um, Basically got like a hundred like donations and had like around ten to like eleven thousand or thirteen. It went up and down, right? And match funding and like they basically a, mo a month and a bit ago, no one knew who they were. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Crazy. So yep. I think what I'm curious about the more we talk about this social reputation. Okay. Uh, I I'm just curious, like how are you guys thinking through the revenue generating aspects and like how do you want to see that come into fruition? Um, like do you want to see Revenue based on work that is actually, or do you want to see revenue generated based on final products, or do you want to see revenue based on contributions? Um, what do you mean we'll, by that? we'll be funding projects that generate revenue. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is that a prerequisite? 
Do they have uh, to have like a revenue plan? plan? So with, with the oh, DAO today, and then they don't. how do you divvy that up? To but get funds from the re revenue generation DAO, yeah. Okay. So I mean, we're, we're talking about some things that haven't yet been crystallized. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to circle back real quick, and then I totally want to open it up. The um, the idea of like the social capital being so much more important than the mechanisms that are running any of this, right? It seems to me like Meta Cartel, because you guys are together and visible in the general Ethereum community, people point to you as a source of reputation. So internally, you might have these metrics of like who has voting shares and stuff, but it's more about we trust you guys together collectively. How much do we need a blockchain centric to this versus just like on open source communities? These seem to have the same um, mm -hmm. principles, right? Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. we have a collection of people who are organized in a way, and that organization I trust more than the individual dependent. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I wonder if you can speak to how much is this something totally new? Like what, what makes a DAO better than just guys getting together in a traditional sense? Distributed so, fund distribution. Yeah, so firstly, you can't like pull uh, money from everyone's credit cards into like uh, right. one pool of money from like with like uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten different countries all, from all over the world. Right? You have right. to trust one person. Yeah, and then make that. small, tiny amounts, right? And then manage that trust like in a fair mm -hmm. way. There's no real way to kind of govern and, and enable that coordination, firstly, right? You, you need the, the financial aspect of this on-chain multi-sig with governance actually matters. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's everything, but right. it's part of it. It's part of it. It's it does part of it. it. That's how it's different than just pure open source development. But there are, very, there are a lot of overlaps. Yeah. Organizationally, uh, that we talk about in terms of like you know open source development, new people want to come in. They're oh, given yes. like these like small tasks, right? Same thing with the DAO. Like if you're a early member, you have to like put skin in the game. Are you going to do these like small tasks? Then you earn your way into like being able to like have more influence in the DAO, right? right? So it same thing with open source or open source uh, projects that are managed well. Right, you don't give the keys to some new guy that comes in and just says, "Okay, let me like rebase it, <laughs> you know, you know, whatever." Right? You, you know, you give them like, little small chores first, yeah. and then like, you know, so the real killer app is the collective distribution and administration of that robot of your money. Right? Smart uh, I, would, I would I would say that you know, smart like by the, the ability to pull like tiny bits of money f uh, into buy community together, right, is will allow you to build a community. Uh, better and faster, yeah. right? Um, that's a killer like application of like DAOs in my opinion. It's like it allows you to build and choose better and faster. You can fund, you can actually leverage uh, the, I guess, the money uh, of the community, right, and the value of the community to coordinate time and effort. Yeah. So this seems a little bit like a, a uh, I guess, a conundrum. Is we say the saying is, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. Yes. If you want to go, that's a, that's quick, a and, right? If you want to go long, go together. But it sounds like you're going fast and you're going together, right? That's so is it, I mean, that is exactly our motto. I think that's emerging. Yeah. I did yeah. not yeah. expect decentralized yeah. coordination to be quicker. Yeah. So yeah, that, I had, yeah. The, the, was like when we launched Monica in February, yeah, yeah. like I would have. There was. It blows my mind. Like there are like multiple DAOs that have like yeah. sprung up. So is that maybe part of the principle that we're seeing? Is that why a blockchain, a DAO, right, is more important? It's because you can move so much faster with less friction collectively. Well, the coordination cost in general, when you know that one person doesn't control the bank, mm -hmm. that one thing is like a campfire and everybody just goes mm -hmm. yeah. and then it splits yeah. off and then it yeah. splits off and it splits off and yeah. that one little thing is what we're seeing, but that coordination yeah. cost is like it. But I, I think the other thing that we see is the momentum can get slowed down when you have internal conflict. And at least so far, have you guys had any real internal conflict? Nope. There have yeah. been discussions and, but, and yeah. places of content, contentment for sure. Yeah, you know, like, like top people. V two is coming where you can kick somebody, but that hasn't even. We, we have had have real contention. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we've been done we've a good job. Healthy, healthy discussion. Yeah, we've, like, mm -hmm. we we haven't had content, like strong conflict because we've done like firstly put a heavy emphasis on pre screening, mm -hmm. right, uh, and and culture uh, culture fit, right, mm -hmm. uh, and you know like. We also have a dancing chili that helps filter like <laughs> um, quite well. Like one reason why we have kind of just like kept it around was that you know it kind of like it established like one of our principles, which is like to not take ourselves too seriously. Right. right? One of our values is also like yeah. you know uh, be fun. It's it, yeah. be fun YOLO, right? <laughs> and it's like it, and we realized that it that dancing weird little chili thing that it's just like created a suite of memes, right? Never stop like really interesting people from getting involved. 
And instead, it was the opposite. It attracted like the people who like <laughs> uh, were mesmerized by that little thing. Yeah. But yeah, you know, again, not like, planned but emergent. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. I want to open it up. Uh, what are the questions that we have, Jake? So let's say I have a, a, a project. Presumably, you're looking for like quick projects in the Rev Gen DAO, so that like aren't too expensive to start out because the bank's not so big. So let's say I have like a project that doesn't require that much time or development uh, to get to a revenue generation place, and it's a, you know a pretty small project that's almost fully decentralized and functional already, but just needs like a little bit of work. Um, what would be the process to see if MetaCartel uh, would be interested in funding it? And is there a way to um, basically, let's say, uh, uh, you know, the project has 100% equity, would it be possible to uh, uh, donate or trade a portion of that project to the MetaCartel DAO uh, in exchange for becoming a part of the MetaCartel DAO? So firstly, we have a forum in which we coordinate all our funding proposals for Right, so like uh, every proposal gets passed into funding is firstly a forum post. We actually have um, so firstly this is like poorly communicated forum. Uh, Metacartel.org. It's also now a website uh, <coughs> metacartel.org, and you can click on forum, right? And if you find your way to the way to the really obscure section of the forum where it says like how to apply for funding, you'll see some instructions, right? Or like some information that kind of provides some light on your project, right? And uh, while while we have been basically, right now, we're funding uh, projects that are firstly like potentially building blocks, right? And can create wide uh, distributed value for the ecosystem. And secondly, like, you know, projects that, you know, push like experiment with business models and use cases, right? Like, we've been basically just coordinating around that uh, criteria. But for our revenue generating DAO, right? We'll likely, um, we'll likely act, uh, operate in a similar way. It's like, you know, what is the input? What is the output? Expectations, sorry, timeline, uh, scoped out milestones, right? And um, yeah, like I think uh, it'll start up with uh, Forpost and we'll likely operate the similar way. Anything else? And oh, sorry, on, and you, you, you talked about like whether you know we could exchange shares, right? Um, it would depend on the DAO. The DAO can do whatever it wants if it agrees to it, really. So, you know, talking about you know, generating capital, uh, revenue. Uh, what are some of the projects that are kind of tangible that you can give examples to be, uh, I guess, so uh, use cases that actually physically, via what means you are planning to generate that capital? I mean, there's many different what ones. Means? I mean, one concrete example is recently we conducted this experiment called Dow Soccer, right? Uh, you know, basically we were getting really interested in like microfinancing, right? and experimentation with NFTs and you know we DevCon Osaka was coming up so we were like you know do you know be great it would be great to kind of like create uh, Osaka themed DevCon Ethereum <coughs> art, right for the community to kind of like buy and take a piece of right uh, back home uh, and we kind of like uh, basically wanted to conduct a microfinancing experiment and also to see if we can actually make money from it right and we were like you know NFTs are a great way to make money because of high margin goods you know you can sell them for twenty dollars right uh, while uh, minting them for like 20 cents, for example, right? And so we basically worked with known origin, right? Uh, art entity platform to actually work with a creative and art base, right? Uh, creative artist, artist space, right? To actually commission our work, right? Um, so how, how, what we did was basically we created a DAO to pull funds in, right? Or just like a multi sig rig, if you will, to pull funds in, <laughs> right? Um, and we basically posted, posted this like link to pledge into the DAO on Twitter. Within a couple of days, it like collected around seven hundred dollars, right, uh, from the community. Like just twenty. We 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 mentioned how it works and all the conditions and etc. Right, and it was like minimum twenty dollar pledge, maximum hundred dollar pledge, right. <laughs> like we wanted to get people involved, right, and understand what it takes to run microfinancing experiments, right, and you know the inefficiencies of them, right. So we collected about seven hundred dollars. Uh, Medicato put in two hundred dollars, right. So we done nine hundred dollars, and No Origin put in like a hundred something, right. And then we use this a thousand dollars to commission artwork from like uh, NFT artists, right? Um, and this was done in a very manual process, but we got the art and we took that as the artwork and we made, uh, we sold it uh, uh, quite a bit and to the point where we actually made, uh, you know, one hundred and twenty to one hundred fifty dollars in revenue. I mean profit, right? Where we actually made like a thousand one thousand one hundred twenty something like revenue, right? In total, and technically that was like ten percent profit in like a month on in business. Uh, I mean. 
Well, that's one experiment where we really just wanted to focus on microfinancing, but it was like also experiment of like uh, use cases, right? And like you know, understanding how to make a profit. And you know, I it's really like interesting that you know, um, it's like what can make money, right? What is useful? You know, uh, if something's being used quite a bit and it's being useful, then you can probably monetize it, right? And then earn money from the repeated use, right? Um, and well, our hypothesis around like the revenue generating DAO, right, is that you know. We really want to actually narrow in on like composable building blocks, right? Um, that can like uh, generate, that can be used uh, over and over again in a permissionless fashion, right? And generate revenue. That's why we were quite interested in like working with Audi, right? For example, because we realized that it might be a piece of infrastructure, right? Uh, on the application layer that could be used by pretty much a lot of dApps, right? And could be very useful, um, you know. And you know, we're just narrowing in on these, right? And that's another reason why we supported Midbase, right? It's like and Kickback. It's just we realized these were tools that were very relevant to the Thai community, that they were likely to be used over and over again. Will it scale? Who knows? Yeah. But I think what, we've, what, what what's coming out of it, that it was an unintentional consequence, is this ethos or culture of like, just do it. Let's experiment. And the sh that became a shelling point of like people that are just willing to do stuff, right. who err on the side of not thinking, but just doing. And will it work? Who knows? Right. And this is why it's okay to fail, <clears throat> right? And this is part of the ethos and then you get that asymmetrical information advantage by doing things instead of just sitting there and hypothesizing excuse me and so that's the culture that we're trying to kind of like, like cultivate it's like no one's making money anyway so how do you make a hundred dollars how do you make a thousand yeah. how do you uh, make another thousand next month right how do you make ten thousand dollars as quick as you can and, and, and then the right. repeatable and like it's like yeah I, I think it's such an economically sound thing uh, just because it 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 uh, completely eliminates all the immediate gains that are attained in traditional, like legacy systems for financing. You know, because a lot of people are venture capital, private equity. They're looking for revenue generating projects right now. They're looking for interest rates that they can, where you know, I can give you a loan for fifteen percent, and I will be generating income from the point of that loan. But in this circumstance, everybody is individually liable for their own. And the DAO isn't liable uh, for any debts that you know accrue over time, which is a super interesting thing. Uh, it's fundamentals, right? And of like yeah. you know, providing an investment and expecting uh, return on that, right? Uh, profit, exactly. right? So uh, it, yeah. it, it forces long-term interest uh, because everybody's working toward you know or, iterating, right? Or if you don't believe that that is valid, you rage with. Exactly. Right. right. If it goes into a direction that you don't like, you can always opt out. Yeah. So you always have that safety mechanism, that like kill switch for yeah. yourself, that escape hatch. And it becomes this like, and this is why we, we realize it becomes a shelling point of like, what, what have we created? We created a, a culture of doing things. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the value is. It's not the tech. Right. It's a shelling point of people coming together that are actually wanting to get things done and not afraid to fail. So there's like the psychological safety aspect of it because as long as you're betting on yourself, we will support you. Right. And the tech has greatly enhanced our ability to do that. That's things, right. Because we're using every the bare minimum of the tech basically to enable the human coordination. And I think, no, that, getting, I think uh, that enhancement yeah. is like using it to enhance our ability, not replace it. We're not being uh, distracted by widgets and yeah, flashing yeah, yeah. lights, if you well, will. Well, but at least in the case of Metacard, though, you're also not in the business of generating revenue. You're in the business of gaining funds that you can distribute. Yeah. So um, in that sense, like I see it is a call to action and getting that drive in there. Mm -hmm. But the mechanism is basically altruistic right now. Yeah. So the replacement where we see, can we still have that same culture when it is like, if you don't produce, we don't have money, you, the DAO's dead. That's the hypothesis to test, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we want to fail. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. And ideally, it's like, you know, it's very simple. Where it's actually, it, hypothetically, my gut sense is that, you know, it shouldn't be too different to what we're doing right now. You're simply lifting and shifting. Yeah. We, can earn, we, we can't legally earn revenue to we can. Yeah. And we should just like lift and shift out money and drop it on so, things that should earn revenue, right? So here, yeah. here's maybe a bit of a hack that we could, we could I'm engineering <clears throat> right now, is this mechanism works, but it doesn't make money. Those who have put funds into Medic Cartel now, though, they obviously made money, right? Could internally some revenue generating profit seeking venture then decide that they want to 
fund this stuff, much like we see with the open source um, mm -hmm. um, initiatives yeah. happening. Yeah. It's like uh, all the big guys, Microsoft yeah. and Google, they're basically kind of doing this. They're like, right. wait a minute, right. if we just give these guys money, they're going to go, right? Is this effectively that same kind of thing? So where we don't even need the DAO, so to speak, um, to be revenue generating. We need those mechanisms, but only enough so that they can drive well, this. Well, so this is an interesting well, question. Yeah, to scale open source, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting question, right? Like, if you have like a hundred different DAOs that have like, these like hundred different like focal points, maybe, maybe that is the beginning of what the EF can do to decentralize itself. And maybe the EF is like the Microsoft, the Google, the Cisco of DAO corporate sponsorship. Mm. But you have to prove yourself first as a DAO. You have to like put your skin in the game. Right, and you can't expect that you're going to get funding. Like open source projects, don't expect that they're going to get like corporate sponsorship, right? In order to survive, they need to be able to sustain on their own. Once they show that they provide value, yeah, yeah, prove then prove then the corporations say, okay, that project is valid. I don't want that project to die, right? right? Then yeah, then the sponsorship yeah. comes in. Right. So you have to put your. So it's about like getting again going back to like it's the showing point of getting people that are doing and they're shipping that believe in themselves, that are betting on themselves, to put the skin in the game first and not ask first. Yeah. You're not asking like, oh, give me money first. Yeah. You're like, okay, I want to help and contribute first. And that's the kind of ethos yeah. that we're trying to like cultivate. That's the beautiful thing that I see about this mechanism is it drives the right kind of people who want to take those chances. You know? So if anything, um, maybe this is, this is an ask for me and for anybody who's here local, I really want to experiment with revenue handling and potentially generating um, community here, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, how do we make Crypto Rado uh, a fork yes. of Meta Card oh, So, okay. so his, yeah. it's usually talk about that yeah. because it's like a <laughs> 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 fun idea of like uh, me and Amin had this idea of like, Crypto what if we could create a, a world government, right? Uh, created from like you know. Uh, from all the different meetups of the world, right, where each meetup would be sustainable and actually attribute a uh, bit of its revenue and profit, right, towards its like opt in government, right, if we want to coordinate funds, like, uh, you know, uh, like a UN of like crypto meetups, if you will, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I say meetup might be the wrong term as much as. You mean it's valid now. We're talking right, right, about right. hyper local communities yeah, that yeah. meet each other face yeah. to face. Who then can scale right. up? It's, right. like, it's like you can firstly try to sustain yourself, um, your own, the, your operating expenses, right, through means of like maybe opt-in payment, right, mm -hmm. subscriptions, perhaps, right, NFTs, art, right, merch, stickers, right. You can actually sell all of these things and perhaps actually not only be sustainable, but actually have extra money in the bank, right. Uh, and <coughs> you decide to opt into the, you know, the world. Uh, Demon Global, like, uh, alliance, yeah. if you will, or the Moloch yeah, Dina. Demon Global. <laughs> yeah, I, like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like, being, you know, or like the, I've been really careful with my words here. Um, it's like the capitalists. Like, you can align with the axis of, um, uh, like, Ethereum meetups, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, here's, here's also a curious slant that will probably be taken totally wrong. Um, the idea of these hyper-local communities getting together and working together collectively uh, for altruistic means anyway, is a church, right? right? Sure. So how much, how much are we effectively making the right kind of mechanisms to scale what's gone well with <coughs> systems without God, so to speak? Well, I think right? it's, it's actually it's like, I, 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 instead of like... It's not a it's not a thing, it's a cult. No. <laughs> it's not a doubt, it's a cult. I, I would say like, it, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's yeah. Well, I, I would say that it's not so much church, but it's like this full circle, right? Like human nature, we started out as tribes, and then we industrialized, and we came back into cities, and then we have nation states. But maybe it's kind of like going back to this tribal system. Yeah, right. I think yeah, it's the hyper small groups of, yeah. yeah. Decentralized autonomous cults. That work well, together. You're, you're <laughs> you're <laughs> you're yeah. Yeah. Decentralized yeah. autonomous yes. cults. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I see. Well, churches. There's this huge trend towards, there's too much power at the top, so right. I feel too disconnected yeah. from anything that right. affects me. I, think, so, I argue too, like, a lot of people like want to affect change, whether that be like in a global sense or in their local community or within their own family, whatever it may be, and like, they're paralyzed, like, especially in like the larger issues that like they're not directly involved, they're paralyzed by the inability to do anything. That's and like, true. the DAOs, the, what this provides is a way to like, not only put like, a <coughs> game by money, but like to actively work towards that initiative 
and work, find other like-minded that want to do the exact same thing. Right. And that's another interesting feature is you can kind of engineer people toward building toward a public good, right? Right, and exactly. That's the idea of law. Yeah. And that provides meaning, right? And that's why humans collaborate and we coordinate together. We did this faster and cheaper than the government could have ever done. If you could just prove that like model once, like imagine what that does. Like how well, people start to rethink what governance is and how it can be effect like how changing effect can be done. So, and one thing we've kind of noticed with the, some of these smaller DAOs is this role of the summoner, and it, it, there, there is, there does have to be like one person, right? Sure. So, in it's this a general DAO, obviously, right? Someone who is is really like not elected leader, not even technically the leader, but like the figurehead, like the person that can is the community organizer, right? And really can represent everything. And I think that it like that. The, the, the DAOs that have started and not done so well, it's because they didn't have that person. The, the ones that have done really well is the ones that have yeah. the Peters and the James and the DAO. I, I think that's where it like maps more closely to open source development, yeah. where you have a strong maintainer. Yeah, strong maintainer. Right? Right? That, that's, that's really where there's like this overlap and then this learning. Right? Because open source development is all about like remote development for the most part. Right, and people coming in and permissionlessly like contributing, right? But now we have this like slightly different take because now we have this value transfer and this voting system. But I think there is this overlap with open source development that we can learn from and that we should look toward because they've solved a lot of the issues. Yeah, for sure. And directly incorporate the DAOs too because yes. you always need code. Yep. You yes. know? Yeah. So incentivize the code. It's like a hand in hand relationship. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, less code is more secure, but yeah. Well, no, but like need more development. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's simpler yeah, yeah. for sure. For the end user. It's and a, yeah. to bring more people into the system. It, com yeah. it comes back to like the human aspect too. Like like the reality is like organizations fail and do poorly when there is nobody leading or owning like that initiative or that campaign or whatever it may be. So like or, or you have to be very, very clear at the outset, like these are all the responsibilities and roles, and this is for each of you, this is what exactly you're gonna do. It's like actually quite almost high. harder than having one person being like, I'm taking this on my shoulders, at least initially. And then it's it like, out. if Ethereum had Vitalik, right, uh, and then like Bitcoin had like Pump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, when, my family was sick. Bitcoin never gets sick, yeah. right? Um, you, know, you know, like like RG has a photo, right? All these open source projects have like a like a, like a janitor that pokes you and messes right. people, right? Like most of like being, like a summon of the DAO is just like a cool name for like you, the dude who like creates a weekly meeting and like tells like people to attend it, basically, <laughs> right? And it's like, oh shit, we have to like meet up here. How do you do that? You know. Um, we're going to talk about blah, right, blah, basically, blah. right. Yeah. Agenda writing, basically, it's like half the effort. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, creating someone to like describe the shelling point of like betting people what the like, alignment yeah, is. Yeah, there's a lot to it, but you know, like betting people, yeah. you know, there's yeah. you know, uh, going out and sourcing projects. At least for us, right? It's like going out and just being proactive, yeah. making like I guess uh, plays, if you will, right? You really like the point guard. Uh, you know, of like uh, the basketball team, and you're like setting your team up and your community up for like, you know, success. Please, right? And you rehearse them, etc. Cool. Well, guys, I think this has been a fantastic discussion, mm -hmm. and I really want to get out and drink more beer and <laughs> keep talking. So, what do you guys think? Is there yeah. any other pressing questions we have for these wonderful people before we go and harass them outside? <laughs> no? Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Be sure to join us next time. Cryptorata.org.